1885, around the American Thanksgiving, 30 Canadians traveled to New York City. The plan was to play a string of games in northern New Jersey, both indoor and outdoor. Considering our theme today, the indoor game, I'll focus on that three-game series in Newark, New Jersey. As you can see from this ad uh, game uh, preview in the Boston Globe, uh, 1885. So it's just more proof that the game is just as old here as anywhere else in the world. Yes, 1885, I am not smoking any of that crank cigar uh, <laughs> advertised there. But why Newark, you might ask? Well, Newark was home to Clark Threadmill, a Scottish company who had their U.S. headquarters in the city. Plus, they sponsored a team, ONTFC, our new thread football club. Newark was also the seat of power in American soccer, the American Football Association, the third oldest football association in the world was founded there in 1885. ONT traveled to Canada the previous summer, and now they were to host the Canadians. On Thanksgiving Day, the first unofficial international took place at Clark's Field. 11-11, outside. Canada won, 1-0. My joke would be that was the last time they beat us, but they're uh, uh, changed that history uh, just recently. These three indoor games were also international and they were played later in the week. They were played here at the skating rink. So we'll see this, you know, place uh, hosting games, right? Rinks, armories. Well, the Canadian delegation traveled to Newark via New York City and were met on Thanksgiving Day at the Market Street Depot. They were met by the AFA delegates. They led them up Market Street towards this rink, and they were marching behind the Lincoln Fife and Drum Corps. They were welcomed there by the city of Newark mayor, Mayor Haynes, and then on December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, the Canadians were to meet the ONTs for, as advertised, an International Challenge Cup. This rink notably hosted the Industrial Exhibition of 1872. Think of a forerunner of a World's Fair. It was a showcase of all Newark-made goods, thousands of products, literally everything from asbestos to zippers. That diversified economy sustained the city through its ups and downs. The first match takes place, and it says the thread men were whitewashed. Really a one nothing. A match, a large game, uh, a large crowd witnessed the Canadians beating ONT. Um, through the very brief match reports, you really don't have an idea if it's 11 v 11. The outdoor games were 11 v 11. Um, the space could have accommodated 11 uh, or 22, but uh, not sure if it was 11 v uh, 11 or small side. There were no uh, lineups. Uh, the second match. Uh, takes place here again. And a side point about the rink. I like to think of it perhaps as an apt metaphor for American soccer, right? Diverse, productive, through its ups and downs and its twists and turns. That second match, a day later, a night later, takes place and ONT manages to score a goal in front of seven, several hundred people. 1-1 uh, one, one is the victory setting, I mean, is the score setting up that final match uh, for this international trophy. Canada wins, uh, winning the first match, winning the third match, and tying the middle match. So they take possession of this international challenge cup. And it is mentioned here uh, in this brief write-up in the Newark newspapers, the Canadian captain gets up to make a speech. We have no idea what he said, but he takes possession of this International Challenge Cup. Um, he also compliments the hosts for their hospitality, and this is now this exchange back and forth between um, the Toronto area clubs and uh, the New York area clubs as these unofficial international matches. So it's a significant uh, a week in American soccer history, and that trophy, which I've never seen an image of, is perhaps the second oldest trophy in American soccer history. 
Um, David's going to pick up the New York story in a minute or two. Uh, but uh, the game gets played there. You can see here that it's much smaller, five aside. Um, and uh, you would likely think that the games uh, in New Jersey influenced what was going on two weeks later. Soccer people are very resilient, right? They can catch on to a trend uh, and, and push it a week later or two weeks later uh, and pick up on something on short uh, notice. Perhaps those games led to this enthusiasm, this curiosity for the indoor game uh, as Newark FC travels to Manhattan two weeks later. And here is the oldest trophy in American soccer history, the AFA Cup, which was awarded to ONTFC in 1885, 86, and 87. This is a carpenter based in Kearney, Harry Holden, uh, posing next to that trophy in 1880s. Uh, so my final question is, where is that old international challenge cup, right? That US-Canada trophy from those three indoor games. Perhaps that's fitting too. Uh, the indoor game is distinctly American, but it's also, as <coughs> Steve has just mentioned, all uh, too often forgotten. So thanks for indulging this very brief episode in 1885. And uh, thank you. Um, David is going to finish us off today uh, talking about New York. Uh, but kudos to him for putting this lineup together. Uh, and thanks for so many people for coming out. So David Kirkpatrick.